Hi, this is John Sarton with the Rio Grande Jewelry Tech Team. Uh, today I'm here to show you how to properly use a polishing cabinet. Before you start any process, consult the safety data sheets for the personal protection that's needed and, uh, and any other pertinent information as to the compounds you're using. A couple of the things that you're going to be needing for this is a pair of safety glasses, a dust mask, make sure that it is rated for uh, particulate use. Whenever you're polishing it, the parts are going to get hot. It's good to have something to protect your fingers from the heat. You do not use gloves in this manner because it can get drawn into the wheel. It can pull you into the wheel if it gets caught. So uh, always use something that if it does get caught, it can actually be pulled off of your finger easily. One thing you really never want to do is polish chain or wire on this machine. It is way too easy for that chain to get caught up. Best way to do that is uh, actually use a polishing cloth, wrap the polishing cloth around the chain or the wire and pull the chain through it. One thing you need to do before you start polishing is actually if you have long hair, make sure you pull it back, put it in a ponytail. If you have any necklaces or chains, take those off. And if you're wearing long sleeve shirts, roll up your sleeves because you don't want any of that to actually get caught in the wheel. First thing you need to do is install the buff on the machine and the buffs come with actually a pinhole and the pinhole threads on to this this tapered mandrel. Um, the way that I like to do it uh, initially is I will put the, the buff on, I will hold the buff tight and I will start to spin the axle of the machine. And what I'm going to try to do is I want to run this down until it feels kind of snug. Because if you don't get it snug enough, the first time you turn it on, it'll fly off the end of the machine. Um, if, you, uh, if you look on this side of the machine, you can actually see the spindle coming out the other side. So I like to always get maybe, uh, maybe a quarter inch of that spindle on the other outside of this buff. There is a safe area on this wheel that you always want to work with. And I'll talk a little bit more about this as we're polishing. Um, but uh, you want to be in this quadrant between the basically the six and the nine o'clock on the right hand side of the machine. Um, anything below that or anything above that, uh, you have a danger of the actual wheel uh, grabbing a hold of the piece and, and slinging it out of your hands. Um, so uh, we're going to rake this uh, in that same safe area as we're going to polish. So I'm going to turn this machine on. It's going to be loud um, and uh, we're going to get a little bit fuzzy. Okay, ready? It's going to drag the rake across the uh, face of the wheel and you're going to notice that there's a lot of uh, threads of the, the fibers coming out of the wheel. Um, this is natural, but you're just going to do this until the thread stops uh, coming out and then just go ahead and turn the machine off. So now you see that there are uh, threads on coming out of the buff. These need to be trimmed off. So just go ahead and pull the buff off of the machine and using a pair of scissors, we just want to trim those off. You need to make sure that you keep a separate buff for each compound. You don't want to cross-contaminate. You don't want to use uh, a buff with a, a cutting compound and then try to use the same buff with a, a final finish compound because you'll never get the, scrap, the scratches out of your pieces. So make sure that you uh, label your buffs. And I really like to keep my buffs in individual sealable bags as well as the compound itself. So I will take this off, I will put it into a resealable bag and just keep that separate because even dust from the next polishing or dust on the table can actually get into your buff and it can cause you problems with polishing. Now let's talk about how to apply your compound and also we're going to talk about how to hold your jewelry pieces as you are, as you are uh, polishing them. Um, compounds, a lot of people think that more is better when it's actually the opposite. Um, less is better um, with compounds um, because you can always add more if you need it. 
but if you start off with a lot of compound on the wheel, the wheel will just kind of glaze over and you're not going to get any type of finishing at all out of the, out of the wheel. So whenever you go to apply your compound, um, remember uh, it is uh, you're going to be working in the safe zone. This is the left hand wheel. So your safe zone is uh, three and six. So you never want to be working above here or working below that six o'clock position. You always want to be within that, uh, that little triangle between three and six. So whenever you're applying your compounds, you turn your wheel on. You're gonna let your motor get up to speed. And then you're just going to uh, lightly press the compound against the wheel and drag it across the face of it. That's all the compound that you need. Now, with some compounds, you might need a little bit more. With other compounds, uh, like this particular compound, you need a lot less. So now we've got our wheel loaded to start polishing. So whenever you start polishing a piece, and I'll turn this off so you guys can kind of hear me. Whenever you start polishing a piece, uh, you really want to make sure that you're using what's called a pinch grip. Um, a pinch grip is actually going to allow, if for some reason the wheel decides to catch the, uh, the piece, um, it's going to let the piece come out of your fingers easily without, uh, uh, without doing any damage or, or pulling your fingers into the wheel. So always keep that in mind. So um, this, is a, this is a pinch grip. So if, if for some reason the wheel grabbed it, it would be easily pulled away from from my fingers without pulling my fingers into the wheel. Another thing that I need to mention is you need to be really present whenever you're using this machine. Uh, you don't want to be thinking about something else. You don't want to be uh, having any distractions. And whenever you're using this machine, you want to make sure that as you are moving the piece across the face of the wheel, that you are not going to catch an edge. And this is where actually the wheel can actually catch the product and pull it out of your hands. In polishing, we're, we're using typically two to three steps. Uh, I'm gonna show you a three-step process here on polishing. Uh, the first polish, uh, the first compound and the first wheel is actually my cutting compound. So this is what's going to do the majority of the work of removing scratches uh, or any type of uh, burrs on the, on the piece. And uh, so let's go ahead and polish. So I'm going to start down on the end of this bracelet and I'm going to start polishing as I move up. And you see I'm rocking it straight across the wheel and I'm using the full width of that wheel. And you can already see that a lot of those scratches are gone. Uh, you never want to stay in one place because if you do, then you will start to see uh, you'll start to see actually railroad tracks that can actually cut into the metal and cause uh, worse scratches. So keep it always in motion. And I'm going to do half of the bracelet for this for this particular thing and then I'm going to turn it over um, and then I'll do the other half and what this does is it keeps me from trying to hold something really small so always think about that as you're polishing and we're just going to go ahead and continue with this right I'm always keeping an eye making sure I'm not going to catch an edge Now, if you have a really stubborn scratch that you can't get out, one thing to do is actually, if you pull up on the wheel, that is a more aggressive cut than if you were just to push against the wheel or just let the wheel run against the, the item. So if you have a, a scratch that you're really trying to get out, go ahead and pull up on the wheel. It's gonna, it's gonna give you a more aggressive cut. Okay, now that I've finished the, uh, the first cutting step of the polishing, um, I went ahead and washed the item with soap and water. You really want to do this step because you don't want to cross-contaminate your wheels. We're going to a finer compound. 
Um, so we don't want to take any compound that might still be on here and cross-contaminate this wheel. If you do that, then you're going to be looking at uh, you're going to be looking at not being able to remove all your scratches. Okay. So um, so now I'm ready to start with my my first finishing step. Uh, again, we're working uh, three or, or uh, a nine to six or six to nine. That's your safe area. And uh, we're going to apply some compound and we're going to continue polishing. You might find that working in circles will help you remove some of those stubborn scratches as well. So now, I think we're done with that pass and we need to clean the item up and go on to our third and final step um, and this is where you're going to get that really high luster on your pieces. Uh, changed my buff to the corresponding buff to go along with my compound um, and uh, one thing I was wanting to mention is Whenever you first start working with a polishing cabinet like this, uh, you might want to work with smaller buffs. Instead of the large six inch buffs, um, use a four inch buff. The reason for that is um, wheel speed. So on the larger buffs, the, the wheel speed is a lot, uh, a lot greater than the smaller buffs. Um, wheel speed can actually, uh, it, it can actually cause the item to be pulled out of your hands quicker. Uh, smaller buffs are a lot easier to learn on, um, and they do just as good a job. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and do the final polish on this. Uh, again, we're working uh, in the safe zone. The safe zone is between the six and the nine position on the right hand wheel, three and six position on the left hand wheel. So let's start. And that right there is a pretty good polish. Hope you found this information helpful. And if you have any questions, give us a call.